This is the brand new Gigabyte RTX 5060. It's the low profile one. You can see by that bracket there. Let's tear it down. So I took off the warranty sticker. So I don't know how it works in your country, whether they can deny you a warranty if you take off that sticker. I don't think they can here in Canada. Okay, so that's that there. Pretty straightforward to take off. I don't see any other weird brackets. I think we're okay. Yep. So they're using a paste, I guess, right? Is that a paste? That's a paste. Okay, so they're using a paste. Uh, I'm going to upgrade it. Again, it's a fairly low wattage GPU. I think it's about 140 rated. I was seeing it at 135, no problem. So I would say just be aware that, you know, the paste might be okay, but I find typically in these smaller systems, these are the places where PTM can really go a long way. PTM 7950. Anyways, so pretty straightforward. We have like a putty rather than pads on the VRAM. So the VRAM, you know, we have uh, four chips here with thermal putty on it. Interesting that that's not fully covering that. I'm gonna push that over slightly. Uh, four VRAM chips, but I think they have those three gigabyte modules now, three, six, nine, 12. So I guess if they use the three gigabyte modules that NVIDIA apparently has on tap, then you could get up to 12. Okay, fine, get some PTM on this now. I have several, I have some from eBuy7. I actually have some Amazon stuff, I'm not sure. In my test, the Amazon stuff came out the same as the official PTM, Honeywell, but I don't actually know. So because this is more of a scientific test, I have done a video on the Linus crap, LTT. Uh, and you know, they don't make it, they just buy it. Uh, but they work as like a middleman to ensure that it's real, I suppose. Um, if you're buying off like some weird seller, you don't know, this will help overcome that. So I'm just gonna cut this. And I have a full video on this if you wanna watch, uh, just proving that it works and that it's real. And I actually benchmark it against, I think just a thermal paste. Um, I have a video that I didn't actually finish because I'm stupid. And I actually did uh, these Helios thermal sheets. Uh, these are good because they're easy, but the performance is not great. Uh, wait, that's not the right one. This, this is the, you know, cryo sheets. You can flop them in and out. They're okay. They're good for like benchmarking, quick benchmarking. Like put it in, put it in, put it in, because you don't have to take off the paste. It's not destroyed by each thing. So it does the job, but the performance was the lowest. Uh, this came out very similar to PTM, a little bit not quite as performant. PTM came out as king and uh, thermal paste actually came out. Actually, thermal paste came out similar to those little pad, that little cryo sheet thing. Sweet. Okay, so that's looking good. That should actually theoretically increase the performance. Which way is the putty kind of missing here? Let's go. Yeah, just build it up slightly, the Z height, just a touch. Okay, that should be good. Now, slap it back on, and we should be cooking. Now, I do actually expect a slight performance improvement in this. It's still gonna be limited by the fact that I'm in a small form factor case. Uh, I'm gonna be doing some benchmarking of this GPU in a few minutes for like 5060 type testing. Uh, and because it's a low profile, you know, I don't want to be hitting thermal issues. Oops. I did the test. I did some testing last night in this exact same spot and the performance is way better, way better. So we were hitting 88, 89 easy. This has been running for at least 15 minutes. I just sent a bunch of emails, just letting it do its thing to see what's up. Uh, we were hitting 88, 89, which was peak. It was, it was throttling essentially. Uh, we were not getting these clocks static. I have actually slightly overclocked, I guess overclocked undervolted, kind of in uh, MSI, nothing crazy, but you can see here, uh, I just went with a custom curve. All right, let's get in there. Custom curve there, about 2600 megahertz on the core, 2650. Uh, it crashed when I went slightly higher than this. I could probably fiddle with it a little bit, right? I could probably fiddle with it a little bit and get better results there. Um, but whatever, it is what it is. Uh, so yeah, there's the clocks right there. 26 and 14 on memory and core. Again, you could probably fiddle with it a bit, but that's huge. So we're actually running at higher clocks, uh, static higher clocks. I think these were, uh, actually the memory clock was similar. It was, it was bouncing around, but it was kind of similar. But the core clock was lower by at least 200, if not more. Uh, we were also throttling. So we were hitting, you know, 89, degrees. That was probably part of it. We were just throttling. So I've done the PTM and that alone did help a little bit. It didn't truly bring down the like max temps, uh, but what it was doing is it was just not throttling as much. So the cl clocks were just staying higher. They weren't going. Shoo, shoo, shoo. So that's good. And then the second thing that I've done here is I have uh, modified that curve there. And this is great. Honestly, we're getting more clocks 
on the, especially on the core, memory seems to be higher, but um, the core clocks are definitely higher, like 2655 locked. We were bouncing around 23, 22, 24 was kind of the max and it was bouncing. Here it's just 2655 locked. I could, again, I could tweak it more. This is just like a quick and dirty example here. Get that PTM on there also, which helps with the temperatures there. And it's running really well. We're getting better frames too. So I'm gonna bring up uh, my footage from yesterday and we're going to compare the two of them. So that's that. Uh, I'm not, you know, I'm not advocating you guys buy the 40, the 50, 60 as your primary desktop. I mean, if it's cheap, sure, whatever. Um, but this low profile one is where the interesting thing is. I mean, you're able to put it in a little OEM system like this, really get, you know, pretty rock solid gaming performance on something like that. I mean, I built this one from scratch. It's a tiny little thing. It looks big on camera, but it's actually tiny. But I mean, get your, you know, you have like a Dell Optiplex or a Lenovo, um, what the hell are those things called? Idea Center or something like that. And, you know, they only have a single eight pin connector. And, you know, maybe they even have a decent CPU, a 12700 or something in there, 12400, 13400, whatever, something like that, just already in there, right? And that's a good CPU. Pop in this GPU and all of a sudden, boom, gaming PC like this, right? Like this has a more powerful CPU, but it's not going to make a huge difference in gaming. So, I mean, there you go. This thing is actually very, uh, very overclockable. I mean, I'm not a prof I am not a professional overclocker, not even remotely within that realm of existence. But, you know, adding that PTM to make sure that the thermals were good, um, as good as they could be. Um, I am going to like add a, a fan to the front of this case here, a little uh, 180, a little 80 millimeters, sorry, just to get some air in there. I might actually exhaust. I might put it around here and then exhaust out because the CPU is pulling directly from the side. It's its own world there, but I kind of want uh, somewhere for the freaking heat because I can just feel the heat passively coming out of here, out of where the GPU is. And I just want to suck that air out just to get it out of there. So there's no kind of like little bubble of hot air in there. Uh, I could technically push air in, but this thing needs exhaust. Actually, it already has intake. It doesn't have any exhaust technically. And I think that'll make a big difference for temperatures as well. But like that, like we, uh, this has been at least 20 minutes and we're not hitting that 89 uh, that I was, I'll show my video. You know, we're, we're sitting at 84, 85. Very good. So really, really good uh, boost on that. Quite happy. I'm actually quite happy with this here. The RTX 5060 low profile from Gigabyte. So Gigabyte has done a good job here. NVIDIA, I mean, it is what it is. Gigabyte is doing the work here. Like they are making something good out of something that was mediocre. I'm very impressed with this here. Uh, the next thing I think is uh, hopefully, you know, get some three gigabyte modules on here. Maybe they can do that and get this thing up to 12 gigabytes. That would be sick. Cause I mean, we are playing with VRAM here, right? This is not even a VRAM heavy game uh, considering, I mean, the performance of the GPU, uh, but it's doing pretty well here.